So let's look at this example here. So we have this example. Then when you look at this part here, this uh, first question here, saying half plus half i in brackets and then raised to power five. And then when you look at this, uh, uh, this formula which has been given here, we know to say the value of n will be five and then what you have here is just a complex number. And then in order for you to use the Movell's theorem, it means that you first have to convert this complex number into polar form. So how do you convert this complex number into polar form? We learned last week. Also, yeah, last week, yeah. So the value of n, our value of n is equal to five. So we first ignore this n. When you want to solve this, you ignore this n first, convert this in brackets into polar form. So you can start the conversion. So in converting, first of all, you first have to, to find the, the, the magnitude of this complex number and the argument. So the magnitude of this complex number, I'll call this complex number z. So the magnitude of this z here, is equal to the square root of uh, half squared plus half squared. Uh, sorry, let me just write this one part. Okay. And then this is half squared then this is equal to, so when you add this, it, you, when you add this and this, you are going to have two over four as your answer. And then the square root of that, I think you get, uh, so this is your magnitude. Then let us try to find now the argument. So the argument of uh, this same complex number z, the argument of this z will now be equal to, uh, it's just tan inverse, tan inverse of half over a half. So it will be one over two, and then this one over two divided by one over two again. like that so when you find this this is just the same as tan inverse of one then we all know to say tan inverse of one is nothing but 45 degrees so for you to know where this which quadrant this complex number lies you don't look at the angle but you draw it here you sketch it on the argon diagram so i can approximate my half there and my half there, so it will be one over two here, and then another positive one over two, I'll approximate it to be there. So meaning my complex number is in the first quadrant, which implies that this, uh, this angle here is the one that is now called, uh, is the one that is now 45 degrees. So having found the argument and uh, and the magnitude here, we can now write this complex number in polar form. So this complex number z in polar form is going to be uh, one over two, one over two, and then one over two, and then open brackets. Then you have cos. 45. Mr. Teddy. Yeah. Mr. Teddy. I'm waiting. Well, isn't, isn't it one over the, the root of two? Where? It, there on the, on the Z. On, on the Z, which is the, ampl the, the, what's this, the magnitude. The magnitude. Look at this. When you find the square of half, you have one over four, right? 
So when you add this one over four to another one over four, you get your answer to be uh, two over four. So two over four, yeah, I think you are right. Because the square root of this is now going to be one over root two, yeah. You are right. Thank you very much for that correction. You're welcome. Yeah. So it's going to be, <coughs> excuse. So this will give us one over root two. And then this will be plus i, and then sine, again, 45 there. So you've expressed your complex number in polar form. So now this z raised to power five means that when we raise this z to the power five, uh, it will be like this. It means that you are raising everything here to the power five. So we're going to have something like this. So your z will now be, so z to the power five, will now be equal to, this will be one over the root of two, then everything to the power five. I'm just following this uh, formula here, where I say you raise the r to the power of this n, which is five, and then you multiply it with uh, the complex number, again, you raise it to the power, to the power five, the same power, which is n. We're going to have cos 45, then plus i sine 45. So this is what we're going to have. Then you raise it to the power five. So here you now have to just simplify this. Uh, the root of uh, two, uh, raised to power five is just the same as uh, uh, two times two times root five, uh, root two, sorry. Because we know that uh, uh, root two times root two, you get this two. Another set of root two times root two, you get another two. And then the last root two is the one that you have. So meaning uh, the root of two raised to power five, you have four root two. I said, so meaning I'm going to have one over four root two. And then you open your brackets like that. So what you do with this, according to this uh, formula here, they are saying you have to multiply n with the theta there. So this n, which is five times 45 there, you are going to have, uh, is it 135? Yeah, no, one, not one to state five, but you're going to have 225 as your theta here. So you're going to have cos uh, 225. Cos 225 degrees, and then plus i, then you put the same i sign, 225. degrees. So this is how you, you solve these uh, expressions using uh, the Movell's theorem. So let me just show you how to solve the rest so that we move on. So for this one here, the second, the second question here, it's also straightforward in the sense that uh, here, when you open the brackets, you just have something like this. You have one plus i root three uh, raised to power. I'm going to have it raised to power. You have the numerator uh, raised to power 10 and also the denominator raised to power 10. You have something like this. So, 
So from here, I think it's now even straightforward. There are two ways, there are two ways in which you can solve this question. So if you want, you can first deal with the top part and then the, you, you come and deal with the down part. The other way you can solve this question is uh, by finding the conjugate of the denominator here. So meaning you have something like this, uh, one plus I root three, and then you have one minus I root three. Then you find the conjugate of the denominator there, then multiply it with everything. So the conjugate of the denominator is nothing but one. Uh, it's one. It's going to be one uh, plus i root three. Then everything you are going to have like this. So this is what you're going to have. So once you simplify this now, you are going to have a complex number that is going to be in the form x plus uh, i, y. When you simplify that expression, then after having this, you raise it to power uh, 10. And then now go through the procedure that we just did on the first one here. You find the argument, you find the the modulus of a complex number and then after that you combine the two to form a polar form of that complex number then after finding after converting it into polar you now multiply the this 10 with the argument that you are going to have and then write the final answer so this same applies to this one here these two are not very much different it's just that it's just that the numbers are different but the way you work them out is just the same so on this one at least we on this one this question here it's even uh, easier because uh, this complex number has already been converted to polar form so here what you just need to do is to factor out the uh, the root of three here, which is the magnitude of this complex number. So when you factor out the root of three, you're going to have uh, root three, and then open brackets, you're going to have cos, this is two pi, then everything over nine, then you have minus uh, sine, minus i, and then sine, you repeat the same two pi over nine, then close brackets like that. Then you have your power outside here. Your power is six. So according to the rules of indices, this six applies to the root of three and also to this. So meaning you're going to have root three raised to power six and then also this so for this one we know to say when you've raised the complex number to the power any uh to, to any power you just multiply the power with the with the argument there so we're going to have six times uh six times uh two over nine you have your answer to be uh this is a uh, okay six times two you have your answer to be six times two is going to be 12 pi and then over nine like that and then i sine you have your 12 over nine pi like that so here it's just a matter of simplifying the root of three to the power six. It's just the same as multiplying this root three six times. When you multiply this uh, root three six times, it's just the same as having three times three times three, which gives you 27. So you have your 27 outside, 
you have your 27 outside there and then the rest here is just the amount of simplifying the argument or I say cos then 12 divided by 9 3 can go into 12 four times and then 3 can go into 9 three times so it's just a matter of simplifying the argument there over 9 so this is it then when you look at this one here the fourth question here number four well, it's not really number four it's supposed to be five uh, so when you look at this the the fifth question here here it's uh it's straightforward here what you do is since you're multiplying these two complex numbers so you can first uh you can first uh deal with this power here where you just multiply it with the argument there and then you also work out this one everything okay let me just do it quickly here so you're going to have something like this so to, this complex number raised to power 12 you're going to have your solution to be like this it's going to be two cos then we said uh, when you multiply 12 uh, times this argument you're going to have 12 over 9 pi we're going to have 12 over 9 pi and then you have something like this plus i sine again 12 over 9 pi So you have your answer to be like that. And then you multiply it again with this. So here, what you do is you raise this uh, two, this two here to the power five. So we're going to have two to the power five. And then when you multiply your complex numbers, your complex part here, when you, when you raise it to power five, it means that you're multiplying this five with the argument there. So you have your cos, and then pi over six times five to be, let me just write the brackets properly, to be five pi over six. And then you have plus here, the same there, you have I sine five pi over six. So this is what you are going to have. So from here, now, remember what we said, when you're multiplying two complex numbers, what you do is uh, you multiply the, uh, the, the magnitude. So here the magnitude that we have is one, since there's nothing outside, meaning the, the magnitude that we have there is one. And then here we have two to the power five. Then we know to say two to the power five is just, in, it's just nothing but H2. So, here we're going to multiply this stage two here two to the power five times one you get your stage two there and then open brackets so when you're multiplying two complex numbers remember what we said we, you just have to add the what the arguments so here is just a matter of adding the arguments it's just a matter of adding the arguments So when you add these two arguments, you're going to have something like this. This is going to have cos, and then 12 over nine. You're going to have 12 over nine, uh, and then plus five over six. So 12 over nine plus five over six, you're going to have something like uh, 13 over six, yeah. So 12 over 9 plus 5 over 6, you're going to have 13 over 6 pi. 
and then plus i sine 13 over 6 again this side i then you close the brackets so this is the answer for this question here it's just as simple as that same applies to this one here we are multiplying here you are just dividing so meaning you do the same first you work out this top part here you simplify it you raise this three to power this three to power three and then this three to power six and then when finding the final answer it means that you're going to divide the arguments you get your when you divide the arguments you're going to get your error there and then open brackets and then the angles after multiplying them with their powers you you subtract them so you're going to subtract the angle that you're going to find here minus the angle that you're going to find there then you put them there as your complex number so it's just the same just that here we are multiplying there we are adding so when you're multiplying you add the arguments and then when you are dividing you subtract the arguments all right so let's uh, move here we have the same questions again it's almost the same so on this question i've only seen one question which is a little bit tricked on this question yeah so what you do is uh, what, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to solve this one and then on your time go and solve this one and then submit your answer yeah submit your answer the reason why i've picked this one this one is a little bit complicated compared to this one this one is straightforward you just have to um, multiply the powers with their arguments and then when you're multiplying two complex numbers we all know to say you add the arguments and then when, when you're dividing two complex numbers we know to say you subtract the argument so let me solve this question here i'll solve this first part and then we proceed so when you look at this first part the reason why i'm saying it's a little bit complicated is because all complex numbers we know to say this i this i here the i is always uh on is always the coefficient of a sign but in this case we have this i here being the coefficient of uh, uh cos so meaning there is a way in which you can uh change it it goes on what in front of sign so now how do you do that so here is a is the process so I'll write what is on top there, cos. Okay. Someone is raising the hand. Let me just hear what, what they want to say. Okay. Zani, are you able to wait? Uh, I think that was just a mistake. Okay, this is cos. So I'm going to write this cos theta here. And then plus i sine theta. And then everything in brackets and then raised to power 8. and then proceed so everything over so when you look at this denominator here it has this i on cos now how do i move it to sign so you know to say okay let me do this let me write this i can write it the way it is as well so sine uh, theta then plus i cos theta then everything raised to power four so now if i want to change this if i want to change this uh, i want to take this i on sign there 
uh, I know to say if I want this i to go in sign, it means that I should multiply everything. I should multiply ev everything in these uh, brackets with i. But how how can I do that when everything is raised to power four? It means that the i that I want to multiply with everything there is going to be raised also to power four. Even on top there, I'll raise it to power four. So when I do this, this is just the same as adding nothing to this expression because i to the power four divided by i to the power four, I'll get one. One times this expression, one times this expression is going to be the same expression. So what I'll do here is, uh, what I'll do here is, I'm going to now multiply this. So this, since we have the same powers, since we have this raised to power four, and then that raised to power four, it means that in other ways I can write it as, uh, um, okay, let me write it here. I can write it as cos theta, and then plus i sine theta, then everything raised to power eight. And then, I know to say i to the power four, i raised to power four is just the same as i squared times i squared. So i squared times i squared is just the same as negative one. We know to say i squared is negative one times negative one, which gives me the positive one. So where there is i to the power four here on the numerator, it's just the same as multiplying everything with uh, one here which just remains uh, the same. And then on the denominator here, that's where now I'm going to multiply this i with everything that is in the brackets there. So in other ways, I can write this denominator here as, uh, as this. So I'm going to have my sine theta here, and then plus i cos theta, Sorry, this is cos theta. And then I'll put my i inside there, and then I'll put the brackets outside. Raised to power four, like that. So this one, in other ways, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to mute everyone, but I think not everyone is muted. I'm still hearing some voices, okay? so. So when I expand this, when I expand this, I'm going to go back to this part, to this denominator here, this one here. So when I expand this, I'm going to go back to that. If you look at it properly, I'm going to have i to the power four and then everything in these brackets raised to power four as well. So from there, what I can do again is that I'm going to multiply this i with everything in the brackets there. So I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have cos theta on the numerator there, then plus i sine. So i sine theta, then everything raised to power eight. And then the denominator there now will be, uh, i times sine theta there, I'll now have my i sine theta. Let me just write it in advance here going to have my i sine theta here, because when I multiply i times sine theta, I'm going to have i sine theta, and then plus this i times i, I'm going to have a negative i times i, I'm going to have a negative one times cos theta, so meaning I'm going to have negative cos theta, like that. So, now, this is raised to power four. So when you look at this, when you look at this, we have a negative cos here, and then on the numerator there, we have a positive cos. And then this implies that we cannot uh, easily uh, add these, uh, we cannot easily, <coughs> use the domains, the, the, the Moveau's uh, theorem to, uh, to simplify them. So the Moveau's
theorem only works when everything in the brackets are just the same. So how am I going to get rid of this cos? I know to say, let me just cut here. I know to say cos theta, first let me write what is on top there. Cos theta plus I sine theta and then everything raised to power eight then divide by so i know to say this negative can also be taken inside the what can also uh be taken inside this argument here so the argument that i have in this case is negative theta i mean is is theta but i'm going to push this negative inside uh cos theta or even i think the simplest way i can do this let me not complicate things here. Let, let me just say I'll factor out this negative. Yeah, I'll factor out this negative. Mm, I'll factor out this negative, meaning I'm going to have cos theta here, and then I'm going to have minus i sine theta, then in brackets, and then I'm going to have. Um, in this raised to power four, then I'm going to have negative one raised to power four, like that. So negative one raised to power four is just the same as positive one. So one times everything here, I'll just remain with that. So let me copy this again. Plus. Mm, I sine theta. Sorry. I sine theta and then raise to power eight. And then I have everything divided by. So this this expression here, since there is a plus on top and the minus uh, on the denominator, it means that you cannot still use the the Morgan theorem. So what? How do we get rid of this minus here? So I know to say the cos of negative theta, cos of negative theta is just the same as, uh, so I know to say the cos of negative theta is just the same as cos theta. If you try to use your calculator, you try to, uh, to, to, to punch there cos negative 30 and cos 30, you still get the same answer. So cos negative 60 will be 0 0.5. Same applies to cos 60, you still get 0 0.5. So I'll put this negative there in brackets, and then I'll put a plus here. Because I know to say, uh, I know to say sine negative theta will give me negative sine theta. Sine negative theta gives me negative sine theta. Sine negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. You should master that. So when I press on the calculator, sine negative theta, I'm going to get sine theta. That's how it is. So sine negative theta, I'm going to get negative sine theta. Sorry, yeah sine negative 30, the answer will be negative sine 30. So it simply means that if, if sine negative, if sine negative 30 is negative 0 0.5, uh, when you multiply negative one times sine 30, you still get 0 0.5. I don't know if you've gotten the concept there. So this is what I'm going to do here. Now, since I have the, the signs there, just the same, and the trig ratios there, they're just the same. So, oh, sorry, this is supposed to be four, not eight. This is supposed to be four. Okay. So now here, it's just a matter of opening the brackets, using now the movers to multiply everything there. So I'm going to have my angles being equal to, so this uh, theta times eight, I'm going to have eight theta. So I'm going to write my cos eight theta there. And then plus uh, I sine eight theta. Uh, 
and then everything divided by so when I also multiply this four times the negative theta's there, I'm going to have uh, cos negative four theta plus um, I sine negative four theta. So this is what you're going to have. And remember what we said, when you're dividing two complex numbers in polar form, you have to uh, subtract the arguments. So the final answer now here is going to be cos. So when I subtract eight minus negative four, I'm going to get, uh, so eight minus negative four, I'm going to get my answer to be uh, 12. theta and then plus uh, 8 minus negative 4 again I'm going to get I sine 12 theta I sine 12 theta like that so now since the question here is saying uh, the question here is saying we leave the the answer in this form so the question is saying we leave the answer in this form Okay, sorry. It means that uh, uh, it means that we need to remove this twelve. We need to remove this twelve out, which you, which will be just the reverse of what we did here. The reverse of what we did, we multiplied with the theta. Now we're going to remove the theta. So this is going to be cos uh, theta plus i sine theta so we're removing the 12 outside now which give which gives us the power 12 right so this is now the final answer for that question this is the final answer so we now proceed Mr. Teddy, just go direct to what's it? To roots. Mr. Teddy. Oh yeah, just, just a minute. Okay. Uh, why didn't you just go there? Oh, here. Repeat your question. Repeat your question, please. Oh, I'm saying, oh, why did you have to like go through the? It is there, as in the first one, just the, the way the expression was given. What's the purpose of converting it to these other forms? Uh, meaning, you said uh, going just the way the expression was given here. Just from the way it is there. Yes. Here we have. Uh, have you seen that i is on cos theta instead of on instead of sine theta? Have you checked here? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, so uh, unless if the the i also had the sign. Yeah. If 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 this i was on sign theta, I would have just gone direct. That's what I'm saying. The second question here is straightforward because we don't have this situation in the second question. Meaning, for this second question, you just be going direct. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we proceed. So we now start roots, which is the last part of uh, complex numbers. Would have done circles, but I don't think they will, they will bring circles because uh, your, store sheet, your store sheet only ends on roots. Yeah, but if there are also circles. Okay, there are all uh, analytical geometry shapes. On roots, you can find uh, a circle. You can you can find the parabola, hyperbola on complex uh, numbers. Now, we'll not go that far because this is this is just where your story sheet ended. So just end where your story sheet ends. So uh, for roots of complex numbers, we are still using the Mobius theorem. And you remember what we, what we said when you have the n here. 
when you have n here, so here instead of just having n, we're having one over n. So now when you are having n, remember what we said, we are multiplying n with, uh, first we are raising uh, this r to power n, and then we are multiplying the argument with n. So the, there's no difference, even, even in this case, this is the same thing that they are doing. They are raising this uh, r to power n, and then multiplying uh, this one over n with, uh, the, with the argument there. So the only new thing here, or the only new part here is this. And then this is not difficult to master. It's just straightforward. Because r, you raise it to power one over n, this is what you're going to get. And then when you, when you multiply your argument with one over n, you get uh, this theta over n. And then you just add it to uh, two pi k or two k pi. So in other ways, this two pi k can also be written. If you are using degrees, it's just the same as 360 k. So while there's two pi k, you can put 360 k. Then you are done. Yeah. So let's see what follows. So k is nothing but any number starting from uh, zero up to n minus one. So if this was, uh, if this fraction here was uh, one over three, it means that this n is going to move from zero, one, two, up to, it will move from zero up to just two, because three, we know that n is three, so meaning three minus one, you get your answer to be two. So meaning the value of two that you are going to have there, the value of k that you are going to have to be the greatest there will be two. <laughs> So this is why you are ending at two when you have one over three as your, your power there. So that is it. So if you have uh, one over, if the power is one over five, it means that the k values are going to be uh, zero. You start from zero and then one. You know that when you subtract five minus one, you, 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 you have your answer to be four. So meaning you start from zero, and then you go on one, two, three, and then end on four. So four is, your, is going to be the last value of uh, n, that the, oh, the last value of k that you're going to have. So we proceed. So now, let's see, let's take a look at some examples. Yeah, so I've taken the last two questions in your tutorial sheet as examples. So the first example here is saying, the first question here is saying, find all, uh, all the indicated roots expressing the results in the form x plus i, y, unless tables would be needed to do so. So here, on question 10, I think I'll just do question two, two questions and then I'll also do maybe two questions on question 11. Then we are done with complex numbers. So I'm starting with this first one here, which says find the square root of one plus i root three. So, uh, okay, let me just do it. Yeah, I thought I had a blank page in, in front of this. So they're saying find the square root Oh, I think the best way is, let me just uh, create a blank page here. Okay. This is better. Okay, so we are saying find the square root of, uh, find the square root of, uh, one plus i root three. So they're saying the square root, so meaning we're having something like this, one plus i, so they're saying one plus i root three. So this is what they want us to, this is the question in short. So if this is the question, it means that we're going to have something like this, so 
this one plus i root three can also be written as one plus i and then root three. Okay, we're going to have something like this, root three, and then everything raised to power, uh, everything raised to power one over two. I don't know why it has started doing this. everything raised to power one over two because we know to say the square root is just the same as putting two here uh now it's the two is invisible yeah they don't usually put it that's the reason why we've done one over two there so this is uh, one plus i root three raised to power one over two so what you should put in mind here is that um the this this can also yeah this this can also be written as that and then here what we need to do remember what we said the first thing you first have to convert this to polar form because when you look at the formula here the formula here uh, is only dealing with uh, complex numbers which are in polar form. It's only dealing with complex numbers which are in polar form. So that implies to say we need to convert our equation into polar form. And then how do you do that? Remember what we said. First thing you find the uh, you find the magnitude of this complex number, and then if this complex number is z, if this complex number is z or when you are writing this in the exam or test, you can just say, let Z be equal to that complex number. So for you to find now the magnitude of this complex number Z, you have to find the square root of uh, one squared. We all know how to find this, the magnitude. It's uh, straightforward like that. And then, when you find it here, you discover that uh, you are going to have two as your answer because it's going to be one plus uh, one plus. We know to say the the square root of three raised to power two is just three. So three plus one there you get four. The square root of four you get two. And then we also find now the uh, so after finding the magnitude, you also find the argument. So the argument is theta. So theta is given by uh, tan inverse of so theta is given by tan inverse of uh, y over x so our y here is root 3 and then our x there is 1 so it's going to be root 3 over 1 which gives uh, tan inverse of root 3 okay tan inverse of the square root of 3 we know that tan inverse of the square root of three, you get your answer to be 60. So 60 degrees is going to be your uh, answer. Now to check, it seems like somebody is not getting what you're saying. Mm. Then try to check where you are. Is the network the network just okay? Try to check. Okay, so this is what you are going to have. So theta is going to be skisty. And then to test whether your theta is in the first, second, or third or fourth quadrant, what you do is uh, you you write your complex uh, diagram there. This is the imaginary axis, and then this is the real axis. So the real axis here, that the real number that we have here is one. So I'll approximate my one will be there. Then this one is positive root three, so meaning it's going to be there. So root three is going to be there, and then my one is going to be there, meaning the complex number is somewhere in the first quadrant as well. So if my complex number is in the first quadrant, um, if my complex number is in the first quadrant, 
then it means that uh, my theta, my schiste will be there. Schiste degrees will be there. And then from there, what we're going to have is uh, now us writing this complex number into, into polar form. So in polar form, our complex number is going to be equal to, so while there's one plus i root three, we can put a cos. So we can put cos, I don't know why it's doing like this, cos 60, what's happening? Okay, we're going to have cos 60, and then this is going to be plus i sine 60, and then we we'll put everything in brackets like that, and then raised to power one over two. So after finding this, we now have to find our k values. So our k values are going to be, are going to range from zero up to n minus, uh, n minus one. So n, our n here, first let me write my n here. So my n in this case is equal to, which implies that n minus one is equal to so is equal to two minus one. So my n minus one is going to be two minus one, which is just equal to one. So my k values are going to range from zero up to one. So zero and then one there. So these are my k values that I'm going to have. my k values are going to start from zero up to one. So the first, uh, so the first uh, k value is zero. So I'm going to find z with the k value zero. So z with the k value zero is going to be uh, cos, uh, before I write this cos, I have to put my argument first, my, my modulus in front of this. So the modulus of this is going to be this, this one here, which we find it's two here. So I'm going to put this two, and then actually I even forgot to put the two outside there, sorry. It's supposed to be two here. Okay, so the, the Z zero is going to be two, and then open brackets, two to the power n, which is two to the power this same uh, uh, fraction, which is one over two. So I'm going to have two to the power one over two, and then cos, I'm going to have my theta, which is 60, I'll write it there, 60 plus, since my angle is in, uh, is in degree, so I'm going to write 360, 360 times k, my k is zero. So I'm going to put zero there. Then all this divide by two. So my n is two, so divide by n. So everything divide by two. And then I'll say plus i sine, so why are you adding 360? It's, uh, remember what I said in the formula here, you see, I said uh, in most cases, it's, uh, in most cases you are given angles in uh, radians. So when you're given angles in radians, you use two pi. That's the reason why there's two pi here. When you write it properly, it's two pi and then K outside there. So these two pi, Remember when converting radians to degrees, we say this pi is equal to 180. So this pi is equal to 180. Now, what about two pi? So two pi is going to be, let's try to convert this into, deg into degrees. So two pi is going to be equal to x. 
that pi and that pi will cancel. So two times 180. So here I'm remaining with one. One times x there, I'm going to get x. And then two times 180, you get 360. So meaning two pi in degrees Celsius is 360. So I'm just trying to put where there's two pi, I'm putting 360 and then multiply it with the k there. Since the angle is in uh, degrees that we have, I don't know if it's clear. So yes, it's clear. All right. So here we have our sixty, and then plus three hundred and sixty again times my k, which is zero, and then everything divide by n. N is two. Then I'll close my brackets like that. So from there, I'm going to have my z0 being equal to. So two to the power half is just the same as the root of two. And then you open your brackets there. Then you're going to have this three sixty times zero is zero. Zero plus sixty, you get sixty. Sixty divided by two, you get 30. So we're going to have cos 30. Uh, why are we using a zero for k? Uh, the reason why I'm using zero for k okay, is, is because yep. you remember what I said. I said when you're finding the values of k here, when you're finding the values of k, k ranges from zero up to n minus one. So mm -hmm. you, you start from zero and then my n is what? My n is two, right? n is here. It's mm -hmm. two. So two minus one, I'm getting one. So my k values are going to start from zero and end up to one. So I'm finding uh, the complex number, I'm finding the root of this z uh, when k is equal to zero. And then afterwards I'm going to find when k is equal to one. Oh, all right. yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to have cos 30 plus, and then i sine. So when you simplify this this part here, you also get that sine thirty degrees. So after finding z zero, after finding z zero, you also now find z one. So z one when k is equal to one, you find z when k is equal to one. Uh, the modulus here will still be the same. The magnitude will, be, will still be the same, meaning I'm going to have root two there. And then I'll open my brackets here. And then this is going to give me cos. So this will be 60, the angle will still be the same 60, and then plus 360, so 360 times k, which is one now. Then everything divided by, so everything here divided by n, which is two, and then plus i sine. So i sine, I sine 60 and then plus 360. My k there is one, and then everything divided by two. So when you simplify this again, you're going to have something like this. So z1 is equal to, so this is going to be like this. There's two outside there and then open brackets. So I'm going to have 360 divided by, uh, 360 plus 60, you get to, uh, 420. Then 420 you divide it by two, you get 210. So the angle that you're going to have here is 210. 
So it was 210, then plus I sine uh, 210. Right. So I've just thought of something. Instead of us maybe wasting a lot of time solving question 10 and 11, let's kill two beds with one stone. Where since um, we're finding the square root of uh, the square root of this complex number here, let us now try to put all the roots of this complex number on the argon diagram. Once I do that, it means that I'm also answering this question here, question 11. Because it's saying show the solutions of these uh, so, uh, so the solutions of these equations on the argon diagram. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to be picking questions randomly from 10, 11, and go to 10 again, again 11, then one done. So here the question is saying you put um, you show the solutions on the argon diagram. So let us try to show the solutions these solutions which you've gotten uh, this one z1 and z0 on the argon diagram. So the argon diagram will be like this. So when you are showing these solutions here, what you do is, so we know to say this is the imaginary axis, and then this is the real axis. So you draw a circle, you draw a circle like that, and then name your radius to be the magnitude here. The magnitude is root two, so meaning our radius here is going to be the root of two, the radius of the circle is going to be the root of two. So meaning here, we're going to have negative root of two. Even here, negative root of uh, two. Even there, negative of, oh sorry, here to be positive root of two. So let us now try to check where is this complex number Z0. It's at the angle 30. So it's at the angle 30, so I'm going to write my 30 there. So you measure angles starting from uh, the positive X axis. In this complex numbers, you say the positive real axis. So this is my 30 there. 30 degrees. So when you're writing this in an exam, it is advisable for you to use a protractor to measure the angle because you have to be as precise as possible. Uh, normally, that's the reason why they are encouraging you to leave the, word, the solution in this form, x plus i, y. But there are some yeah, meaning you can find cos theta. Cos theta is root three over two. Sine theta is one over two. You multiply, you find your solutions. But I think that one becomes a little bit uh, cumbersome. It it becomes bulk because for you to convert this to do what? Sometimes you okay. Imagine that you have an angle here which is fifteen degrees. Meaning you have to go. You have to start going back to compound angle formulas and then try to find what cos fifteen is. And then apart from that, imagine that you have 12.5 here as your angle, or you have 72.5 as your angle here. What are you going to do? Because 72.5, even compound angle, compound angle formulas will not find. So meaning you just from this part, you can go direct to drawing the argon diagram by using the protractor. So if you don't have a protractor, you can, there now you are going to force yourself to go uh, direct I'm going to force yourself to go direct now to using, uh, I mean, to, 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 to using the compound angle formulas, which is a little, which is very complicated. You just spend a lot of time doing that on one question. So my advice for you is to use a protractor. So you measure this angle from the positive real axis, which is state. So meaning where your state is going to be, that is going to be your, uh, your real, uh, so it's going to be your Z0. So you label your Z0 there. And then now you measure, this is the angle 210. So 210, so this is your angle 210. 
Oh, sorry, this is uh, your angle 30 degrees. And then we move on to the second one. The second one still have, has the same magnitude, which is the root of two. That's the reason why I just drew a circle. I know to say all my complex numbers that I'm going to have are going to be in the same range. So 210 is just uh, opposite, say, to this side. When you use your protractor, you find that it's just uh, the opposite of 30 degrees, meaning you're going to move 180 degrees like that. This is your 210. Oh, sorry, this is going to be 180 degrees. So you're going to move 180 degrees from 30 degrees. If you want, you can try to add 30 plus 180, you get the angle 210 degrees. So this means that you have shown it on the Agan diagram. Let's also do one question from, okay, let's now do one question from uh, question 11. Question 11, question 11, I don't know which one we can do. Okay, let us do maybe this one. Uh, Z to, to the power three is equal to negative. Mr. Teddy. Yeah. I'm getting you. Mr. Teddy, what if the angle exceeds 360? If the what angle, if the angle exceeds 360 degrees? Exceeds 360. Yeah. If the angle exceeds 360, like in this case, we imagine that here there was uh, maybe 420, right? Yeah. If you have 400, maybe 420 here. There, there, it simply means that now you have to use what are called terminal angles. So meaning you are going to subtract 360 from 420, meaning you are going to have 60 degrees, which implies that you're going to move uh, something like this. If, if you have 420, if here, for instance, there was 420, means that you're going to move 360, you move one. Okay, let me start from there, from zero. You move from zero to 360, and then from 360, you come back to 60 degrees there. So you're going to have something like this. Let me just draw it properly. So you're going to have something like this. So this is going to be your Z. I don't know. I don't know the value of k. If that, if this was z3, if there was z3, so it's going to be a z3. So it means that you're going to use what are called terminal angles. You're going to use the last angle in those revolutions that you have. So meaning you just have to subtract it. For instance, there was 420 here, you subtract 360 uh, from 420. The answer that you get is the angle that you measure there on the Agan diagram. I hope it's clear. Oh, yes. All right. So let's take this one as well. Z to the power three, and then is equal to negative root three minus I. So, mm, but I think this one is simple. Let me take at least maybe one which has, uh, okay, let me just take the first one here because I know that when I solve this first one, the rest are just straight, are just okay, they're straightforward. But I know to say when I solve this one, and then I solve also this one, I want to solve those that seem to be complicated. I'll solve this one, and then I'll also solve this one, because these, one are, these ones, the remaining ones, are already in complex form. But at least this one and this one, they're yeah, a little bit, yeah. So, I'll, let me st start with question 11i, which is z to the power 4 minus i. z to the power 4 minus i is equal to, is equal to, what's happening here? Okay. Is equal to 0. I said. Okay, so here, what you need to do is, you need to understand, okay, first, let us take this uh, I, 
to the other side of the equal sign. So I mean, we're going to have z is equal to, we're going to have z to the power for being equal to r, like that. So what you should understand that this i can also be written as, or this complex number z to the power four can also be written as zero. So the real part there we have is zero, and then plus the imaginary part, which is i. So our z can also be written as the fourth root of zero plus i. Because here I've just like found the fourth root this side so that this fourth root can cancel with that powerful and same applies to this part. Yeah. So this is what we're going to have. So this can also be written as uh, a zero plus i into the power one over four. So the first thing here, you find the the argument. You have to com convert this complex number to polar form. So the argument of this z, the argument of z is going to be equal to. So the argument of z is going to be equal to tan inverse. So tan inverse of y, my y there will be one, the coefficient of i is one over, the real part there x is equal to zero. So tan inverse of one over zero is just the same as a tan inverse of undefined. Any number over zero is undefined. And then tan inverse of undefined, we know to say gives 90 degrees. Yeah, gives 90 degrees. And then from there, you can now find the, the magnitude of the complex number. So the magnitude of this complex number Z is, is equal to, so the magnitude of this complex number Z is equal to, what's happening? Huh? Okay. The complex number, yeah, the magnitude is going to be equal to the root of uh, zero squared, plus one squared, which should still give you one. So meaning this complex number written in polar form is going to be like this. The complex number written in polar form, or before we write it in polar form, we need to find the quadrant where this complex number is. And, re and remember what I said, I said, if you are finding the- Size in each root of one. Yeah, the square root of one will still give you one because one times one is still one. The square root of one, you get one. So here, the, we need to find the, the, the quadrant in which this, uh, this complex number is lying. So we know to say the imaginary axis where there's i is this side, and then this one is the real axis. So, the first, uh, in the real axis, we have zero, we have zero there. So meaning we're not moving any, uh, any distance in the real axis. And then in the imaginary axis, we're moving i times, meaning we're moving one uh, as our distance. We're moving one as our distance there. So meaning the complex number z is in this, uh, is in this axis. So meaning it's in the first quadrant, we can still use the same 90. So this is our complex number Z. So we can still use the same 90. So what we're going to do is this. After finding that it's in the first quadrant, we can now write it in polar form. So our complex number Z is going to be equal to, so our magnitude is one and then open brackets, you have cos, uh, your theta there is 90 degrees. And then plus I sine theta. Also, which is sine 90 now. It's going to be sine 90. It's 
cyanide like that. So this has been raised to the power four. It's been raised to oh, the power one over four, sorry. It's been raised to the power one over four like that. So here we can now resort to uh, the models to find the roots of this complex number. So before you find the roots of this complex number, you need to find the k values. So what are, what are our k values? Our k values are going to have k being equal to, uh, we said we have to start from zero up to n minus uh, one. And then our n here is four. So four minus one is three. So meaning our k values are going to start from zero up to three. Two and then three. These, oh, sorry, I've forgotten to write one there. Okay. So these are the k values that we're going to have. So from there, we can even start now writing the, 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 the roots. So the first root we're going to have is z, zero. So we're going to have our first root is z zero. So z zero is equal to so z zero is going to be equal to the magnitude is one. So if I want, I can be putting it or not. But for just for the start, I'll put it. The reason why I'm saying if I wonder I can put it or not, it's because it's one. One times anything, I'll still get one. I'll still get that thing. So one and then open brackets. Then you are going to have cos. So my theta there is 90. So 90 plus 360 times zero, I'll still get zero. So instead of maybe even writing that, I will not to say Z zero, I'll just get 90 divided by uh, two. So three, C, let me just write it for the sake of uh, you seeing what is happening. 360 times zero, you get zero. Zero plus 90, you still get uh, zero plus 90, you still get 90 and then divide by two, you get 45. So this is what I'm going to have. So instead of just writing everything here, I'm going to just have 45 there. So it's going to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to have 45 degrees and then minus uh, I sine 45 again. I sign 45. So this is this is going to be our Z0. We move on to Z1. So Z1 is equal to, Z1 is going to be equal to, while there is K in the formula, we're going to put, uh, we're going to put one. So it's going to be cos 90, plus 360 times one, 360 times one will still give us uh, 360. So this is going to be 90 plus 360. Then everything divided by two. Okay, let me just check. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you for that correction. It's supposed to be plus, plus here, not minus. So this is what we're going to have. So 360 times the k, which is a one, you get 360 and then plus 90 there. So we're going to have plus i sine. So when we work out this, we're going to have something like, so 360 plus uh, 90, you get 450 and then when you divide it by two, your answer will be 225. So instead of writing this, let me just write 225 for the sake of creating space. So I'm going to write 225 here. 
Um, so I'm going to put 225, 225 there, then I sign 225. So this is what we're going to have. Of course, our magnitude is one. Let me just be putting it. Then we also find Z2. So Z2. Mr. Teddy. Okay. On the, on the K values. All right. Mr. Teddy. Yeah. Yeah, on the K values. Oh, uh, didn't you? Weren't you supposed to use n minus one? Yes, n to minus find the one. K value. Yeah. Values. Yeah, it's n minus one. I said the K values range from zero up to n minus one. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. The time is even gone. Let me just finish up this one. So we find Z2. So Z2 is going to be uh, cos, cos 90 plus, what is K, 3 60 times we put, uh, so 3 60 we're going to put uh, 2 there where there's, where, where there's K, we we'll put 2. We we'll put 2 like that. And then divide everything by sorry by two. This division sign is just supposed to end here. So when you work out this 360 times two, your answer gives you 720. And then 720 when you add it plus 90, you get 810. Then divide it by two, you get 405. So you get 405. So instead of writing all that, let me just write 405. So I'm going to have cos 405 here. Cos 405. And then plus I sign 405 405 all right so this is what we're going to have and then of course our magnitude is one one raised to this power which is uh one over four you still get one so let us find our last z which is z3 is equal to so our z3 is going to be equal to um cos uh 90 so cos 90 plus 360 times 3 so where well, this k we put 3 then everything divided by n. Who? I've just realized I'm using a wrong n. n is supposed to be four, not two. Yeah. So here it was supposed to be ninety divided by divided by four, not two. So this one is supposed to give us twenty twenty-two point five. Yeah, forgive me about that. N is supposed to be four and not two. I'm still using the same two that we've been using that we are using in the previous question. So this is going to be twenty-two point five. Twenty-two point five, and then this one will also be twenty-two point five. So meaning this one here was um, in this one was 360 plus 90, which gave 450. And then so that 450 you divide it by uh, four, which gives 112.5. Uh, so it's going to be like this. 
14.5. And then this one will also be 112.5. N is four. Let me just let me even put four there, not two. So one, two point five. Yeah. So here instead of being four zero five, the the K was two. So three hundred and sixty times two, we said is seven twenty. Seven twenty plus ninety to give us eight hundred and ten. And then when you divide eight hundred and ten divided by uh, four, you get two zero two point five. So these are the angles that I was talking about here. You are getting angles with points. Now, how are you going to use your, your, your compound angle formulas to, to find this, find the values of this? It's going to be somehow difficult for you to do that. Hence, the best way is just to use the same angles to plot the argon diagrams. So here we're having 202.5. Two zero two point five. All right. Let us now proceed. So you have your three hundred and sixty multiplied by uh, the k, which is three, and then plus ninety, you get uh, you get one thousand one hundred seventy, and then when you divide that by four, your answer will be two ninety two point five. So you get your 292.5 here, 292.5, and then plus I sign uh, 292.5. Then you are now done with all the roots. You have found all the roots. We're just remaining with now plotting them on the argon diagram. How do you plot these roots now? You draw your argon diagram like that. Then you put zero there. Of course, this is your imaginary axis. This is your real axis. Then what you do here is uh, you first draw a circle with a magnitude equal to the magnitude of your complex number. And then our magnitude that we found here was uh, this one here. So our magnitude was one. So I'm going to draw a circle with magnitude one. So that is it. So I'm going to put my negative one there, uh, negative one there, positive one, then positive one there again. So now I now I'm now just remaining with putting uh, in my my complex numbers. So I'll first start with uh, z zero. Z zero is twenty two point five. So twenty two point five are approximated to be somewhere there. So this is my z zero. Uh, twenty two point five. 22.5. Then this is going to be Z0. point. Oh, sorry, Z0, not 22.5. <laughs> so Z0. Then I move on to Z, uh, Z1. So my Z1 is going to be somewhere there. Let me just put it there. So this is 112. The angle is 112. So for me to make my argon diagram look uh, neat, instead of right, instead of drawing a, a what, a, a, an arc from the real axis this side up to there, when I draw a lot of them, it will not make it will not look nice. So for me to to make this look nice, I will just subtract 22.5 uh, from 112. So 112.5 minus 22.5, you get 90 degrees. So I'll know to say the difference here is going to be 90 degrees. So I'll put my angle there 90 degrees. 
then this is going to be my z what's happening okay let me just write it proper so yes so this is going to be my z1 and then i move on to z2 z2 is uh, 202 so 202 i'm going to approximate it to be somewhere there and of course when i subtract uh, this is 1 2 when i subtract 202 when i subtract 202.5 when i subtract uh, 1 2 from 202.5 um, I'm going to have something like the same 90. So in short, the other way again, you can know to say your answers are correct. Let me do this. And this line is not supposed to exceed your circle. This line for the complex number. So suppose it's not supposed to exceed the circle to show that its magnitude is just within that circle. So this is going to be my Z2. So Z3 again will be the, the, the angle for Z3 is 292. So when I subtract 202 from 293, oh sorry, 292.5. So 292.5 minus uh, 202.5. You get the same nine inch again. So meaning my Z, my Z3 is going to be there. So I was saying, once, once you just find out to say the angles that you're finding, the angles between your, your, what, your complex numbers that you've found are different. Just know that you've made a mistake somewhere and you've, you've made a mistake. You need to revisit your question, check properly why you made the mistake. The angles between all your complex numbers are supposed to be the same. You can check here from 22, there's 90, from Z, Z0 to Z1, it's 90. From Z1 to Z2, it's 90. From Z2 to Z3, it's 90. So if you just discover that your angles are different, just not to say, you've made a mistake somewhere. All right, so this is how you plot your organ diagrams. I don't know if you have any questions, guys. But I, I think time is gone. Let me just explain this question I said I'm going to solve. I'll just explain it. I've got a question. Okay. Yeah. You can ask. Well, yeah, I, I thought for, I thought there was the, the end value was supposed to be one over four, but you got the first value. Uh, you got. You said the you are going to get one over four as n. No, n is just the denominator there. Oh, I'm saying. Okay. Oh, so it's the denominator. Yeah, you just get the denominator of the fraction there. Oh, uh -huh, okay. So n is four. That's so. Yeah. Uh, then okay, I wanted. I also wanted to know like, uh, when do, when is the. Uh -huh to questions when they don't specify it. like okay for instance when we're doing uh, uh like binomials we had some equations whereby like they'll tell you to specify where you're for negative, to so like when do you like apply when, uh -huh. when do you apply what yeah the, the moves equation yeah oh, oh yeah oh and, when do you like, apply it so okay. yeah let me just explain that it's very important so when you uh, look at these questions here how do you know that you're supposed to use this formula you're not supposed to use that formula so here you need to check every time you have something like powers okay if you have maybe a complex number like that it's in this form um Okay, let me just say, let me just put one instead of putting numbers. If you have a complex number in this form, and then raised to power n, raised to power n, 
just know that you're supposed to use the movables. If you have been told to, uh, to solve any equation in this form, if this is going to be a Z, just know that you're using the movables. Again, if you are using, if you have your Z being equal to this, uh, X plus I, Y, then raised to power one over N. It is still the movables, that's so. The remaining things, you just need to simplify them. Complex numbers are not so bulk. This is what you do. So the movables only applies on powers, that's so. If the complex number has no power, you don't have to use the movables. If it has a power, you can use the movables. Yeah, but of course there are those questions like the ones who are finding, let's take for instance, you have X plus, i y and then raised to power n then over x plus i y i raised to power n yeah but i think this is also the movables there's nothing that is this is also the movables because you need to multiply this n with the argument on the real part there cos x uh, cos theta and then the argument on the on the complex uh, part there goes uh, theta as well. Meaning you are supposed to multiply that theta with n. So meaning it's still the movables. So in short, the movables only applies on complex numbers with powers. Yeah. So I was trying to explain this part here. So the fourth root, they are saying the fourth root. So if our complex number z is equal to this. If they say the fourth root of eight, in short, they are trying to say the fourth root of eight, you put your eight in in, in what in the in the root like that. So I mean this eight can also be written as uh, uh, the fourth root of the the real part there is eight, but the imaginary part there is i zero. That is the imaginary part. The imaginary part is zero. So if you can write the, if you can write this complex uh, number in this form, you can easily find your roots. So I think this is all you needed because here it means that when you find the argument, the argument theta, you are going to have something like this, which is tan inverse. So your argument theta is going to be tan inverse over zero over eight, which is zero divided by any number, you still get zero. So tan inverse of zero, tan inverse of zero, we know to say you still get zero. So here now you just need to find uh, the argument where this complex number lies. You draw your argon diagram like that, you check my eight, positive eight is here, and then zero is still there. So meaning my complex number is still in the first quadrant. It means my complex number is still in the first quadrant. So, which is just somewhere there, which implies that I'll just get the same theta zero. So the first, the, you, you, you now find the k values. The k values will range from zero up to uh, n minus one. Our n there is four. Our n is four there, because this, this complex number there can also be written as eight, plus i zero and then raised to power one over four. So meaning my n there is going to be four. So four minus one, I'm going to have three. So meaning my k values are going to range from zero to three. And then after finding everything, you can also find the magnitude. The magnitude there, you still get it to be, so if your complex number is z, your magnitude will still give, come back to eight. So I meaning you're going to draw this a circle with the radius eight units like that, and you plot in the and then you plot in your complex numbers. So it's just as simple as that. I don't know if you are if you still have any questions. I don't know if you still have any questions.
but otherwise this is all about complex numbers according to your tutorial sheet so we're going to see how mr martin is going to prepare your mock exam if he's going to include circles then we're going to learn circles before the exam we're going to do them it's just a short topic so it, it just takes maybe one one lesson we are done and i would advise maybe to learn circles on circles and complex numbers after analytical geometry because when you understand circles in analytical geometry it will be easier for you to understand them in complex numbers i think if you have no questions guys see you tomorrow we're going to start matrices okay